Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be creating a collage and adding some extra details in our collage. So first of all, obviously I'm starting out with creating a background. And to be honest, when I was creating this page, I didn't really have a clue of what the ending page was going to look like. I was just having some fun making a background. I did start off um, gessoing it to begin with, which is quite unusual for me. Um, I don't tend to gesso things. I don't know why I chose to do it on this day, um, but you know, there you go. Then I added some elephant, which is sort of um, a warm gray color over the top. And I added that while the gesso underneath was still damp. And now I'm going in and heating it. So when I do stuff like this, usually it is because I don't really have much of an idea of where I'm going. So by gessoing or doing something in the background, I get my hand moving and it gives me a chance to work out what I actually wanted to do. I decided I was going to play with some of my gloss sprays. So I've used some marine on this and um, a little bit of night, I think. You can see me sort of tipping it out on the page. And now I've got some glad wrap um, or cling film, saran wrap. I'm not sure what people call it in different cu cultures, countries. <laughs> Can't even get my words right. Um, and I wanted to make sort of like a marbly effect in the background. So that's what I'm doing. And I've got a feeling I must have had a bit of an idea this is what I was doing. So that's obviously why I gessoed in the background. If I had done this on a non-gessoed page, the um, gloss spray would have um, sunk into the paper really, really quickly. Um, and I wouldn't be able to get these sort of resist things happening in the background. So it gives you sort of a good basis to be able to move. For those of you who haven't used the gloss sprays before, it is, it's but like a really fluid um, acrylic. So you can do lots and lots of different things with it, which I really love about it. So I had this really cool magazine image that I have been waiting to use in some way, shape or form. And um, I just really liked sort of the shape of the figure, how large it was and um, the way her sort of hair was coming down. So I decided I didn't particularly like the colour of the, the dress that she was wearing. So I've used a contrasting colour, I've used the blushing here to um, draw over the top of it. And the great thing about doing that is if you use the paint really sparingly like I did in this one, you can still see the detail and the, the shadowing from underneath. So it gives you all that detailing, you're just putting a little bit of colour over the top. To add to the pattern in the background, I decided to use the same stencil, but I've only used part of it, and I've stenciled in just using some white. And as I was doing the background, I had this idea of um, creating like a pattern on her clothing um, using paint markers. So that's what I did. So I stenciled in white, one to get the shapes. Um, now obviously you could draw circles on here really, really easily, but sometimes it's just easier if you've got a model to start with. So um, by stenciling it on, it just gave me a really good idea of where I wanted to put, put colour on my page. Also by having the white on it, it meant my paint markers were going to be really, really bright and get the true colours of them. So you can see I'm sort of going for my rainbow of colours. I'm just sort of choosing out lots of colours that I don't use very often in my um, pens. They sit in front of me, but I don't necessarily use all of them. And I'm just going in and just having lots of fun putting in the different colours. So once I've sort of got my base colours on, now I'm going in and adding some extra detail. And this is where you, well, I say you, we have the fun, I have the fun. Um, and you can get a little bit carried away. So quite often I will have something going on in the background, my iPad playing with something that I'm just tuning into and I can start um, adding some details. So I'm just using a mix of thinner pens, blacks, whites, this thin turquoise, and just adding dots and lines and dashes over the top of these shapes to um, create some pattern work within them. If you are not sure about what patterns to put in or don't have an idea, I know sometimes you get to this stage and have a little bit of a block, um, if you look up Zen Tangling, 
on the internet or you know doodling patterns you can get an awful lot of um, models of things that you can try and copy I know I quite often use them when I get um, stuck for inspiration but in all honesty when I do stuff like this I tend to do really just simple lines and um, lines and dots in different directions I find that works for me you can see here you know just putting some dots into um, using contrasting colors and just putting dots of different sizes one thing that I tend to do with a lot of my work is um, vary up the shape and sizes so nothing's necessarily regular um, I might have a really large dot next to some small dots and then a bigger dot next to it and so on so you get this it's a little bit more organic than structured if that makes sense so you can see here I'm just adding 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 um, I also find what's uh, useful when I'm doing stuff like this is to repeat patterns and I will quite often you notice there with the orange that um, I've got it in three sections on the page so in each of the sections I did the same pattern over the top so I put the little bit of green in. As I was going I decided I needed to put some more detail in so I'm just going in with a white pen and filling in the dots and this is sort of a good representation of what I was talking about before with the larger dots going into the smaller dots so it, it doesn't look necessarily um, sequenced or, or patterned so to speak. And then going in with my red over the green and again you can sort of see me what I do on one green spot I'm doing on all the others. Um, for me that just takes away having to think about oh I need to have a different pattern in every single dot and it gives a little bit of consistency and uniformity, in it, uniformity to each of the things. Now I'm going in with the ladies necklace and I'm just drawing over what's there so there are sort of some simple feather shapes and then some dots over the top. Um, so just adding that in. Then going in with some more dots. Dots are really, really handy. If you ever get stuck for patterns, do dots. Um, they're great for filling in little gappy areas. They're really easy to do. Um, to be honest, quite often when I'm doing this, I'm just using the nib of the pen to make the size of the dot. So you can see I've got some thicker and thinner pens there, and I use those to, to help me out. When I was finished doing her, I really liked her... Um, dress and then I wanted to add some more detail to her so I've brightened up her lips I've put some turquoise in her eyes because I tend to put turquoise and blue eyes on people um, just because I think I've got blue eyes so um, I tend to do that I wanted a little bit more sheer color for her um, lips or not for her lips sorry for her cheeks but she went in with some distress crayon so that's a really um, it's obviously water soluble medium um, but you can sort of rub it in and blend it in a little bit which I really really liked. Then I decided I wanted to have some really long flowing hair to flow across both pages um, just to sort of make it all blend together. You can see where I had the magazine image it's bubbled up a little bit. I don't particularly mind that and the fact that it um, adds a little bit of texture into her hair. I think I used a copper to do her hair so it's got a lovely metallic sheen to it and then I decided I wanted to make it a little bit more realistic so a little bit more realistic she says um, <clears throat> so I've got blood red hair it's not realistic at all um, <laughs> but I'm used to using my gloss spray and I've actually just poured a bit out and using a really fine paintbrush to paint it on and I find that gives me a little bit more control over it so I know some people are really good at drawing with the stems of the the gloss sprays I struggle with that a little bit so I find if I get a little paintbrush out that I can draw it over the top and um, you could obviously do that with paint or a paint pen I just chose to do the um, gloss spray because it is that little bit more translucent so you can see the colors coming up from underneath you'll notice as I was going I have been drying off with my heat gun um, particularly we've got all those dots in such a close capacity together and you're putting your hand over the top of them and so on it is acrylic paint it does dry fairly quickly but I have been known to put my hand in something and smudge it as well particularly when it's on something gloss like this um, magazine image so just be aware and make sure that um, you um, dry it off or give um, a chance to dry in between 
um, working on it. So when I finished I wanted to put a large quote on this page and um, I'm trying to read the quote. <laughs> you were made by something storms. We'll read it at the end. So I wrote it out with white pen first and now I decided I wanted to have the blue to have a little bit of echo of her necklace and so I want to tie the page together. Still trying to read that quote. <laughs> it's funny you get distracted by things, sorry. Um, you are oh, you were made by the storms you went through or walked through, sorry. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, right, I'm happy now, I know what it actually says. I should actually go back to my journals and have a look, but it's um, back in my I finished this journal now, so it's back in my bookcase. So when I finish this, I'm going to dry it off again. You can see that blue makes a beautiful contrast to the back of the page. <coughs> Excuse me. And when it comes to doing quotes like this, I find the quotes as important as the artwork. So I don't mind that the quotes were um, drawn through her hair. I probably wouldn't have put it through the pattern dress because I really love that. But certainly, because there's not much happening in the hair, I'm more than happy for that quote to go into the hair. Um, it makes it a little bit easier for me and less stressful when I'm sort of writing them out, um, thinking that, oh, no, I can't write it there because, you know, I've got hair there. So if I've got that extra room to work with, I find it really easy. Once I've done the quote, I'm going through with some yellow just to help pop it out from the background. So you can see as it sort of gets the close up, all that detail work in her dress, how the transparency of the hair works, how the quote works all together, and then the close up. She does look a little bit mad with that coloured, those coloured eyes, it looks like she's got the coloured um, contacts in, but I quite like how it all ties together. So I hope you have fun having a go adding extra detail to your magazine collages. If you don't want to do the pen work over the top, just try stenciling over the top of it for something different. Um, stencils make great models for um, helping you with the drawing as well. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.